You know, you might think that life can't get started until you get married or have children, but my guest, Michelle McKinney Hammond, is here to say that it's all a matter of the heart. Before we had to go to break, you mm -hmm. were talking about relationships and how it all starts mm -hmm. with that relationship. I thought that was so important. Can you talk about that a little bit more? That it begins with God? Yes. Uh, you know, Ephesians says that it's only in Christ that we realize who we are and why we are here. And so it, that's why the first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, heart soul, soul, mind, and, and strength. Mind, yeah. All of our other relationships flow out of that. Mm, we good. can't have a healthy relationship with ourselves mm -hmm. until we know who we are in God, mm -hmm. uh, what he created us to be, um, the gifts that he's given us, and how to celebrate the strengths that he's imparted to us mm -hmm. through his mm -hmm. spirit. So it's very important to get that proper alignment because if we don't love ourselves, we can't love other people Can't properly. love other people. I like that. Um, I like we'll, that. We'll have to, you know, we'll keep demanding that they fill the gaps that only God can okay. fill. Oh. So, um, oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I just realized that as I began to write single stuff, it led me into a whole study on relationships, period, because at the time um, I was invited to minister places, but there wasn't a lot of singles ministry. So I ended up speaking at a lot of women's conferences right. and I would find myself inundated after I spoke by married women as well as single women Absolutely. on relationship issues. Yeah. And God was just supernaturally just giving me truths and principles to share with them. And so I realized that the area of relationship was really my gifting. Ironically, was the area that I struggled with the most. And so once so, again, there our is. struggles lead That's to it. our destiny. That's it right there. Now you have two recent books, mm -hmm. uh, Matters of the Heart mm -hmm. and How to Be Happy Where You Are. Yes. Talk well, to me about well, Matters of the Heart is the name of the series of okay. books, um, mm -hmm. and two of them are out so far, Getting Past Disappointment, mm -hmm. Finding Hope. This mm -hmm. is an area that a lot of women battle with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've, they've been broken, they've been crushed by past relationships, yeah. and it's hard for them to get back up and running. Mm -hmm. And then How to Be Happy Where You Are, Finding Fulfillment, is another area where women really struggle a lot because we all have that disease called one treeitis. Yes. You know, if, if only we had this one thing, we would be happy. Absolutely. And God is saying, who said you were naked? As he said to Adam and Eve in the garden. I love that. Yes, you yes. Know, um, the, who said that you don't have everything you need right now? When I placed you here, I gave you everything, everything you needed. You need. And now the enemy has pointed you to something that you don't really need right absolutely, now. Absolutely. But now your hunger for that other keeps you from appreciating what I've graced right. you with All in the, the abundance present. that he exactly. has in you. Absolutely. Now tell me. Um, the two common mistakes singles make mm -hmm. when they think they have found their soulmate. Well, they throw all the rules out the window. Uh, is <laughs> <laughs> They really do, you know. Um, usually all the things that they've purposed in their heart, they get so excited about finding someone that they don't ask the right questions mm. and they don't proceed slowly. Mm. But the bigger issue is the mistakes they make before the man ever arrives, um, such as um, putting marriage right up there on a the pedestal next to God and r literally idolizing the institution. And I always tell singles that marriage should not be the goal. Uh, to live life the way God created you to live. Mm -hmm. It should be the mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. um, marriage should be uh, an inspiration that happens when you meet someone that you decide you want to spend the rest of your life with. Mm -hmm. I think that we just live life a lot happier and more fulfilled if marriage was not the goal, that the goal was to be all that we were created to be on any absolutely, given day. Absolutely, absolutely. And as a result of finding that place, yes. you will end up Right. Being married, if no more than just being married to God, that's where you start. Exactly. But, you know, you cannot be a happy married person if you're not a whole single person. It says that oh, two shall become good, one. That's good, Michelle. That's good. Not I like that. Two broken folk and that's two right. half that's folk right. get together. In other words, he's one. not going to fix me. Right. He is not. And you're not going to fix him either. That's right. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Tell me what the future holds for Michelle. I know God has whispered in your ear, and I know there's all <laughs> kind of things going on. Talk to me. What's going on? Well, I'm always writing, so I'm finishing two books even as we speak, How to Get What You Want from Your Man, and uh, Love Isn't Brain Surgery. Go back. It roll it. Roll it back, head. girl. Roll it back. We <laughs> want to talk about that just a little bit. Okay, yeah. roll that first one back that you're writing it's about. It's a study on the book of Esther. Wow. And um, how to get what you want from your man. So uh, I think that, that there's a protocol in the spirit as well as in the relationship world that when we do things God's way, we can get the best out of, out of the people in our lives. So um, whether we think they're, they're uh, capable or not. 
-hmm. You know, Esther was married to an unbelieving husband, mm -hmm. but she still got him to save the nation for yes, God. Yes, she did. So, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a way for a woman to work her magic, so to speak, you know, her mojo. Absolutely. But, <laughs> I love that. Yes, and then the second one is love isn't brain surgery, but it w hurt, wouldn't hurt to use your head, you know. In Philippians, in the message version, it says that we shouldn't just love much, but we should love well and learn to love not just sincerely, but intelligently. Mm. And uh, to learn to love appropriately. Mm. So when we do that, our relationships thrive. And then I have a music project coming out, and wow. I'm working on a talk show in Ghana. So there's Are a lot you? going on. Yeah. Talk show in Ghana. Yes, and I'm still flying back and forth to the States quite often to, to uh, speak. I'll be back in the States in the summer, uh, Tony Evans and um, I'm just all over the place, so I, I love it. Wow, that mm -hmm. is so awesome. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot going on a in the future. A lot going on. Life not, doesn't stop just when you move. <laughs> I, especially when you're flying back and forth every right. other month, huh? Well, now, now this is kind of uh, interesting, but I, I just need you to tell me the skinny on the shoes. Now, how bad is it? I heard that you love, oh, I love shoes. shoes. Talk to me, girl, just, just for a moment about the shoes. <laughs> I love shoes. <laughs> but I think all women love shoes. I don't know what it is, you know. Uh, maybe it's spiritual. How lovely are the feet of them <laughs> who bring good news, you know. Someone made me paranoid. They said, when you're on the platform, your shoes are the first thing people see. And that was a good excuse to go for, out and buy some shoes. For you to go shoes. buy some more shoes. <laughs> huh? Oh, my God. I'm I, I think I'm on hiatus for a while, though. Okay, good. So the shoes are kind of... Yeah, we're, we're kind of slowing our roll on the kinda, shoes. Okay, good. We have enough, trust me. I, I, I kind of saw when I... <laughs> I was like, okay, there's got to be something going on oh, here yeah. with the shoes. When I moved to Ghana, I gave away a lot of shoes, and I still have way too many shoes. Wow, yeah. wow. So tell us, uh, closing, we're, we're just about out of time, you know, as a takeaway, what would you like for us to, in the DMV or just around the world, mm -hmm. I mean, what is it that you would like to be known for? What's your legacy? My legacy. I, I would like my legacy to be that I knew Christ and I did what he said and I accomplished what he put me here to do. That's basically it. I love it. I love it. That is so awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes across in your books. Mm -hmm. We are so honored to have had you here yeah, in Miss Deborah's you. Tea Room. Um, you are, I mean, a, a mentor for not just myself, but for many, many women. So we thank you thank for what you do, all you. right? I want to thank God for drawing one of my mentors from afar closer to us today. I sincerely hope that you've had, uh, you've been challenged to go and grow with your mentor. I also have to thank one of my mentors whom God uses close and upfront in my life for her awesome support. Mentors are important. If you're going around in circles and can't seem to go and grow, ask God to put mentors in your life who will help you move forward. On the other hand, if you are walking in your destiny right now and leaving a path for other women to follow, other women to follow, tell me about it. Send me an email at Miss Deborah's Tea Room at gmail.com. I'll see you next time in the tea room.